بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو ٹو ڈیز سیشن وی آر ڈسکسنگ ڈفرینٹ ڈیزیزز افیکٹنگ دی ایکسٹرنل آڈیٹری کنال سو وی ول کنٹینیو ود دیٹ and this is the basic slide we are following and according to this slide the inflammatory conditions affecting the external auditory canal they are broadly divided into two groups one is infective group and the other one is reactive group this infective group it is divided into subtypes according to the microorganisms causing these diseases so if it is bacterial infection then we call it as bacterial otitis externa and this bacterial otitis externa may be well localized which we know as frankulosis or boil of the external auditory canal or it may be involving whole of the external auditory canal that's what we will call as diffuse otitis externa and if this is a pseudomonal infection of the external auditory canal then we call it as malignant otitis externa while fungal infections of the external auditory canal they are labeled as automycosis and if infection is viral in its etiology then we label it as herpes zoster oticus and there is another entity which we call as otitis externa hemorrhagica under the reactive group there is group of diseases which involve the skin so they can affect the skin of the external artery canal also these are under the heading of reactive group and includes eczematous otitis externa seborrheic otitis externa neurodermatitis now coming back to this infective group already we have discussed automycosis herpes zoster oticus malignant otitis externa and localized otitis externa and uh, you can find the links in the description for these meetings today we will talk about this otitis externa which is diffuse otitis externa this diffuse otitis externa it is also called as telephonist's ear just like a telephone operator he is using the telephone for long time then he may be having the problem and it is also called swimmer's ear because as we will see in the predisposing factors are those who are at risk swimmers are at greater risk to get this diffuse otitis externa so synonymously this diffuse or generalized otitis externa is called as telephonist's ear or swimmer's ear and this is how it can present that not only the external auditory canal but the skin of the concha and the lobule is also affected because of the atoria which is due to the diffuse otitis externa coming out and soiling the skin of these areas so it is defined as diffused inflammation of the meatal skin it is common in hot and humid climates and in swimmers trauma to the meatal skin by fingernail scratching or trying to clean it with q tips can be a predisposing factor because this trauma will lead to abrasions or small lacerations in the external auditory canal and through those break breakages in the skin lining bacteria get entry into the skin layers and cause and cause generalized infection of the external auditory canal skin then those people who are having excessive sweating or excessive sweating occasionally can transform normal acidic ph which is bactericidal in the external auditory canal to alkaline ph so that gives a chance to bacteria to grow in the external auditory canal 
commonest organisms involved are Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas, Proteus, E. coli. As you know, when it is localized to Titus externa, which we label as boil or frankulosis, that's only caused by Staph aureus. But here you can see in bacteriology, different types of bacteria can be the causative factors causing this diffused otitis externa. So predisposing factors, as I just mentioned, swimming, hot and humid climate, then trauma to the external auditory canal. As in the picture, this person is using this Q-tip to try trying to clean the external auditory canal, but in response can cause the damage to the external artery canal skin. Then some people, they have got a narrow ear canal and they have got non-atopic eczema of the skin. So that also may be a predisposing factor for this diffuse otitis externa. Or this diffuse otitis externa may be a complication of chronic suppurative otitis media. That's what it is labeled as CSOM, chronic suppurative otitis media. As in this lower picture, you can see this is the tympanic membrane in the depth, which you, you can see. This is the handle of the malleus where the cursor is moving now. And there is a small perforation in the tympanic membrane. So the purulent discharge is coming from the middle ear into the external auditory canal, swelling whole of the skin of the external auditory canal and then coming out from the introitus of the external auditory canal. So, chronic suppurative otitis media discharge is a predisposing factor for this diffuse otitis externa in this particular case. This is an otoscopic view and here you can see in the depth, if you can appreciate it, this is the tympanic membrane, but these are the walls of the external auditory canal and all, all the walls, they are inflamed and congested and reddish in color. Clinically, there are two types of diffuse otitis externa. Either it can be acute or it can be chronic. Now, any disease in the body can be divided into acute or chronic on the basis of duration of its symptoms. This is clinical classification. Pathologist, they will describe it on histopathological findings because there are different cells infiltration in acute cases which differs from which are there in the chronic cases. So any disease can be acute, it can be subacute, it can be chronic, it can be acute and chronic or it can be recurrent disease. So these are, this is the broad classification of any disease. So any symptom which is there from last three weeks, that disease is acute. For example, it can be acute appendicitis, it can be acute tonsillitis, it can be acute cholecystitis, it can be acute rhinosinusitis, it can be acute otitis externa, it can be acute titus media. So any symptom which is there from last three weeks, for example, if some patient comes to you that I am having gutalgia from last two days or I am having it this gutalgia from last two weeks, before that I was absolutely all right. So that disease will be labeled as acute. Any symptom which is there from last three weeks to three months, that disease will be called as subacute. For example, if a patient comes to you, he says that I am having otalgia or I am having hearing loss, which is there from last two and a half months. That condition will be subacute. And any symptom which is there for more than 90 days, three months, if any symptom which is there for more than three months, now the disease has gone into chronic phase and clinically we will call it as chronic disease. 
it can be chronic tonsillitis, chronic superetabotitis media, chronic cholecystitis, any disease which is there for more than three months. So, for example, a patient comes to you, I am having a ear discharge from last five months. Another patient comes to you, he says, I am having hearing loss or ear discharge from last five years, from last 10 years. Continuously, it is there. So, now the disease is chronic. So, this is the classification on basis of duration of symptoms, acute, subacute and chronic. Another entity can be acute on chronic. For example, a patient says that I am having ear discharge and some hearing loss from last five years. Now the disease is chronic. But he says, now from last one week, I am having along with those symptoms which are there from last so many years. Now from last few days or few two weeks, I am having severe pain along with fever and increase in this ear discharge. Amount is increased. So it means the disease is now presenting as acute on chronic. And recurrent disease is that there will be episodes of the disease and in between episodic attacks, patient will be symptom free. So that will be labeled as recurrent disease. So coming back to the topic, diffuse otitis externa. So it can be acute or it can be chronic. In acute phase, the patient will be feeling a hot burning sensation in the ear, which may be followed by pain. And this pain again will be aggravated by jaw movement. As we know, temporomandibular giant is in relation with the external auditory canal. Then ear can start oozing and followed by serous discharge, which later become thick and purulent. There will be edema and obstruction of the external auditory canal. Along with that, there can be regional lymphadenopathy and cellulitis of the surrounding tissues. So patient will be having otalgia, that is pain in the ear, itching, wants to scratch his ear, there can be ear discharge, which may be serious discharge to purulent and then there will be conductive type of hearing loss also because there is edema and obstruction in the external auditory canal. So, but it will be temporary. Once this acute phase is over, the hearing loss will improve. In chronic phase, the patient will be having irritation, strong desire to itch. Discharge, if it is there, it will be scanty. Due to dryness of the skin, patient is feeling itching and there will also be crust formation. And on examination, you will see that meatal skin is scaly and it is fissuring. Due to dryness, scales are there and fissures are there. So on examination, if you pull the pinna upwards, backwards, downwards or push the tragus, patient will feel pain. All the movements of the pinna will be tender because all whole of the external rotary canal is inflamed. While in case of localized otitis externa, only that direction when you will pull the pinna, patient will feel pain where is the localized infection. Tragal sign will be positive here. If you push the tragus, patient will feel pain. On otoscopic examination, you will see narrow external aortic canal. Lumen is very narrow as you can see, even tympanic membrane is very partially visible in the depth. Whole of the external auditory canal, all the walls, they are edematous, congested and even some discharge may be present there.
So diagnosis, as you can very well imagine, it is straightforward clinical diagnosis. But if uh, still for the choice of antibiotics, you can be sure and ear discharge is there that can be sent for culture and sensitivity so that proper antibiotic can be started. So in acute phase, we have to go for oral toilet. We have to clean all the secretions or discharge, whatever it is there in the external auditory canal. Then we can use the medicated wicks to pack the external auditory canal. The advantage of these medicated wicks are packing the nose as uh, this uh, ear with these wicks is that the medicine will be applied equally to all the walls of the external auditory canal. Because when we use the ear drops, usually patient ask how many drops patient should use and usually patients are reluctant to use more drops. So they will go for one, two or three drops. Those drops, they will be residing over the floor of the external auditory canal and they even will not be in touch with the roof of the external auditory canal and they even will not go into the depth of the external auditory canal. So in those cases, these medicated wicks, these are more helpful so that medication at least is applied equally to all the walls of the external auditory canal. Then accordingly, you can go for topical and oral antibiotics. Analgesics, again, depending upon the severity of pain, you will prescribe these non-narcotic analgesics. And if pain is severe, the choice of narcotic analgesics is also there. And again, oral are injectable, depending upon the severity of the pain. Patient should avoid water entry into the ears while taking bath or swimming. And if there is some uh, suspicion of pus formation anywhere, incision and drainage one must consider. In chronic phase, you have to pack the ear with 10% ichthymol glycerine, oral toilet to remove those crusts and if some discharge, scanty discharge is there because in chronic phase, scanty discharge is there. You have to clean that and once you have cleaned it, then apply antibiotic and steroid cream. Again, the purpose is the same. So that cream should be applied by the clinician, by the doctor to whole of the external auditory canal, all the walls of the external auditory canal. And if there are fissuring or if there is, you know, too much dry skin or narrowing, it is there, then even surgical excision have to be considered, though very rarely it is required. So with that, we come to the end of this session. Again, any comments or suggestions are welcome. You can write it down in comments section. Thank you very much.